I'm Adrienne Schneer, Advancement Coach and Strategist, Lawyer and Professor, and you're listening to the Advancement Spot Podcast, the podcast all about academic and professional skills, strategy, and mindset to help you make big moves to achieve a life beyond your wildest dreams. If you're looking to accomplish more and take your next steps with supportive and experience-informed strategies, look no further. Let's get started. Hi, and welcome to the Advancement Spot Podcast. I'm your host, Adrian Schneer, and I'm so excited that you are here today, taking time out of your busy day to spend some here with us. Today is a bit of a different podcast episode, and I'm so excited about it because we are coming to you live from our Mastering Academic Applications community coaching call every Wednesday at noon. And we have a whole bunch of members. If you're seeing this live on video, then you can see all of our gorgeous faces If you're listening, don't worry. We're all going to give introductions. And the reason that I wanted to bring our community to you is because we had this really amazing conversation last week where we were talking about what it means to listen to your body in times of high stress, what it looks like to really listen to yourself in order to be able to give yourself the chance to restore, relax, and then continue on your journey and continue to be productive and to give yourself what you need in order to make that happen. And so today we're really going to be fleshing out what that means to each of us. But before we do, I really want to get to everybody here. So in the order that I see you on my Zoom screen, I'm just going to call you out And I am going to ask you to give a quick introduction to you. And obviously, Michelle is always first. (laughs) So Michelle, today is like, you know, every other, every other Wednesday (laughs) when you're always in the top left-hand corner. So Michelle, can you go ahead? (laughs) Hi, my name is Michelle Jasinger. I'm a fourth year student in the global program at North University. I've been part of this community for going on a year now. I was part of the Founders Cohort. I'm currently applying to different master's programs, fellowships, and jobs just to cover all my bases. Amazing. Thank you. And Jaylene. Hi, I'm Jaylene, and I've been a part of Mastering Academic Applications since October 2022. So it's almost been six months now, and that's super exciting. I've applied to law school, so waiting to hear back. And I'm currently applying to jobs. Perfect. Thank you so much. And Jaylene has had, she's been on the podcast before. So we'll link to that episode in the show notes. Farwa. Hi everyone. My name is Farwa. I'm in my final year of global health degree at York University. I recently joined the Mastery Academic Applications Program. And with Dr. Schneer's help, I applied to one master's program and also made use of her VIP one-on-one sessions. I'm currently applying to other programs and also looking for jobs. And I'm really excited to be here. Yay, thank you. And Steph. Hi, everyone. I'm Stephanie. I, like Michelle, am a vet of the program. I am currently finishing my second undergraduate degree, and I have applied to medical schools, and now I'm actually applying to master's programs, which I never would have thought I would do (laughs) without this program. So, (laughs) so yeah. Yes. In turn of events. (laughs) Yeah. And you know what? There's so much to say here. So I think we actually have to have another episode on this, but you know, maybe we'll, we'll talk about this actually maybe as part of another like group episode, because there's so much to be said for keeping an open mind about the programs that you're applying to. And if you're listening on audio, everybody here is nodding to that, that, you know, keep an open mind with the programs that you're applying to. You know, we recorded an episode called I'm only applying to one program. And I think that, you know, if you're thinking of only applying to one program or one school, definitely have a listen to that episode. And I think Steph and and many of us will will record another episode on on how that turn of events happened. Because I think that that process in our journey is actually a really important one too. It takes a lot of reflection and a lot of a lot of work internally in order to really think about that and make a decision. So thanks for bringing that up. Casey. Hi, everybody. My name is Casey Bass, and I'm also a member of the Founders Cohort. So I've been with the Applied Health community for a little over a year now. 
it'll be a year in May. So by the time this episode comes out, it'll be, it'll have been a year. So that's awesome. And a little bit about me. I graduated from the global health program at York University. I'm currently working full-time, part-time, whatever job I can get. (laughs) And I'm also volunteering and studying for the LSAT. So when I first started my work with Dr. Schneer and the Apply Yourself community, I initially wanted to apply to law schools. And over time, the more that I engaged in the group coaching calls and the more that I reflected on my life trajectory, I realized that I actually wanted to pursue my master's. So I began applying for master's programs. And with the support of Dr. Schneer and the Apply Yourself community, I am very happy to announce that I have gained admission to my first program of choice, which is the University of Toronto's Master of Public Policy. So I just, I can't thank Dr. Schneer and this community enough. Like with everyone's support and guidance and strategy, I was able to navigate this this really challenging application cycle. So I I just want to say thank you. And I'm very happy to be back on the podcast. Yes. And Casey was admitted to more than one program. You were admitted to several master's programs and that is so exciting. And you were in the position that so many of us are that lucky to be in, which is you had to then decide which program. And that was another process in and of itself. So I'm so excited to hear all about your experience here. And yes, in your other podcast episode about mastering academic applications. And we, and we've a link to that in the show notes as well. So thanks, Casey. And finally, Olivia. Hi, hey everyone. I'm Olivia. I'm a graduate of the Global Health Program at York University, and I'm preparing to apply to law school in the fall. And I've been an Apply Yourself community member since, I believe, November of 2022. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you so much. So let's, we are missing a, a, you know, a few of our members here today, but that's okay. You know, people work and of course they have access to the recording and now they're going to have access to this episode. And so let's jump in to the topic for today, which is how we know what it looks like when we need to start listening. We always want to listen to our bodies, but what it looks like when we are getting stressed out, maybe overwhelmed, and we need to be able to take that step back, take a little break in order to be more productive and and as productive as we can be in a really sustainable and healthy way. Because as we all know at Apply Yourself, we are all about sustainable, healthy strategies. We are not about the, you know, quick fixes, the band-aid solutions, we really implement strategies week by week over time and troubleshoot with each other over time to make sure that they're working because we don't want to rely on those band-aid fixes that don't work. They might work for like a split second, but then they fail. And so we really want to implement these strategies that work and that will work in any circumstance, not just in the applications process, but in life. And so what does it look like for each of us when we realize, okay, I need to take a step back. I need to, I need to take a break. I need to restore. What does that look like in the split second before you're making that decision? What does that look like for you? And maybe we can, I'll go in a different order. Jaylene, maybe you can kick us off. Yeah. I know for me personally, like listening to my body took a really, really long time to implement and to be conscious about. I know that last week we were talking about this and that was the one that brought it up. And I always was mentioning listening to my body and you asked me the really important question, what does listening to your body mean and what does it look like? Yes. And for me, what it looks like when I know that I need to take a step back and focus on me and again, like listen to my body in high stressful situations is when my mood changes. So I can go from being really happy, content to really moody, really grumpy, really irritable, and not very patient with myself, which you need to be patient. Of course, when you're in these high stressful situations, such as studying for your LSAT and applying to programs, you need to be really nice to yourself because things just come up. And I'm motivated to do like task such as studying and writing my personal statement or writing materials for your applications and the most important one that I know that my body needs a break is when I start a task and I know this task will take me a day but it takes me a week so it's taking so much longer to do a simple task 
And then I know that if I just listen to my body and take the time that it needs, which could be a day or two, a week, I will be more productive and able to do this task in a timely manner than if I just like force myself to do it. Because if I force myself, it's going to take me so much longer than what it would if I just gave myself grace. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. And you brought up a few really important points that I think so many of us want to touch on. So I'm going to just say like two sentences, then I'm going to pass it off to the next person. Maybe Casey, do you want to go next? And before before we get there, I'm so happy that you firstly brought up the LSAT because we are growing our test prep department. We're hiring LSAT and MCAT coaches. And this is different from the typical big box approach to things where they have instructors and tutors. We're going to have coaches who know the strategy, who know how to implement the strategy, but also understand our philosophy and also live by our philosophy of non-competition, of the fact that we're all human, the fact that we need customized approaches, that the standardized approach doesn't always work. And so this is something that will really reduce your stress levels and really just increase the amount of fun that you're having, joy that you're having during this process, because it doesn't have to be bad. So thank you for raising that, Jaylene. And the second thing that you raised was that, that, you know, things that could take you a day, take you a week. And we have all been there. We've all been there. And so Casey, why don't you take it from there? Sure. Yeah. Thank you, Jaylene, for sharing. And I can definitely relate to a lot of what you mentioned, especially, you know, the changes in mood, taking longer to do tasks. I know that one of my body is starting to sort of tire out. I, I, I don't notice it, right? I, I'm so enthralled in the work that I'm doing and I enjoy the work that I'm doing, but I tend to have this habit where I sort of push back my, my body telling me, hey, you need a break. So over a period of time, I start to feel a little bit grumpy or irritable, kind of snappy to, to, to the unfortunate people who come across me this way. So yeah, and especially during undergrad, I found myself really trying to distract from needing that break. So I, I would throw myself into the work. And in the long run, it just wasn't helpful, right? I, I knew that by the end of my semester, let's say I would be all burnt out and I would feel a lot of burnout and I would need weeks at a time to recover. So over the years, and as I gained more academic and professional experience, I really made it my mission to become more in tune with my own feelings and abilities and also my limitations, right? So, you know, if I ever take too long at a task, I really try to ask myself, okay, what's taking you so long? Why is it, you know, harder than it seems to be? And for me, what tends to help is that I, I write down what I have to do. I, I have to put it on paper all the things that I have to do in order for me to, to visualize it in a different way instead of it all being jumbled up in my head. And once I have it down on paper and I have like an actual list that I have to check mark off, I think to myself, oh, that doesn't look so bad. And so the way that I think about the task also changes. And yeah, I just, the important lesson is to always listen to your body. <laughs> Don't distract yourself from what you're feeling. That's a huge lesson. That's a huge lesson and something that we take really seriously here that we actually want to feel things, right? We do not want to bottle up the way that we feel. We don't want to bury it. We don't want to push it down Mm -hmm. because all it does is explode like a volcanic eruption later. And that is when personally, in my experience and professionally, in my experience, I have seen people turn to substance use and abuse I have seen people use really toxic vices and what they missed. And it's not their fault because this wasn't available to people before apply yourself. What they missed is this community of people who are supporting each other through these really tough processes and who actually value feeling value feeling. And that is really important. So Steph, you know, do you want to jump in here? Yeah. I just wanted to say that it's very easy to use work as a distraction of how, you know, of how you're physically feeling. Like for me before, before the program, before this community, just like background, I just moved. And that's like another really good example about like (laughs) imploding like a volcano. This move has been like really difficult for me. And like a part of me, 
feels like a little selfish when I say like, I feel like my family is not really thinking about me at all in this time. And it, I kind of imploded the other day. So this, this program and community is like really just helpful to like be able to talk about these things and kind of vent it out and kind of rash, not rationalize. Well, yeah, rationalize before you, you, you flip out and just get those emotions in check in terms of like, like the physical aspect. I, I know I'm burning out when like, if it, like, I feel like I'm in a dream doing my work and doesn't even feel real. And I used to just push through that and kind of just keep going, even though like I, 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 you know, you just feel like you're going to crash at any second. And now with like, now with this community, I kind of just, I kind of start, I'm starting to understand that it's okay to take a break. Yeah. Even if it's just like a day to just calm down and do nothing like, or, or even, yeah, just do nothing. Like I, I I used to just like not be okay with that. And it it used to give me a lot of anxiety because I used to think about all the things that I need to do and be, and like, and, and the stress would make me procrastinate that. And then the list would build up in my head and it would be even more anxiety. And it was just like this, like vicious circle. So like, it's just, it's, it's good to like, be able to understand and to know, like, like other people are also going through it and it's okay to just like, not for like a day or two days. It It totally is. Yes. And doing nothing is doing something. Mm -hmm. Doing nothing is giving yourself the time to restore the time to sometimes reflect Mm -hmm the time to think about things. I mean, we had another episode called the importance of thinking or something like that. And we'll link to that in the show notes too. And we need to give ourselves time to think. We need to give ourselves time away from the busy, away from the detail, away from the nitty gritty and into a space of reflection. And sometimes what that looks like is doing nothing. Sometimes what it looks like is giving ourselves you know, time during the day, time away from the work. And we're going to talk about what that looks like to each of us after. So thank you for sharing that stuff. I think that it's a really important lesson to learn that you don't have to be go, 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 go all the time. And in fact, that will lead to burnout, right? Yeah. Yeah. So thank you for sharing that. We're going to get more into that later. Farwa, what about, what about you? How do you know when you need when you need a break, when you need to restore? Before I start to answer, I want to kind of remember a conversation that I had with Michelle just yesterday when we were Great. talking about a paper that we both had due today. And we were talking about how exhausted we were this week because we had our poster presentations for a practicum and how tired we are and we still have to write this paper. And she was telling me that we can pull all-nighters, but then if we don't, give our body the rest that we need, our body will take that rest for us. And that's what happened to me like yesterday. Like I got home, I took a nap, but then even when I woke up and I was like, okay, I'll just work through the night. I still felt so exhausted that I just slept through the entire night. So it's important to remember how productivity looks for each of us. So for me, it's when I start to have these negative thoughts and start to think of myself as like a machine that has to get all these tasks done. I am not in a positive mindset to work on my tasks. And the most important thing that I noticed when I know that I need to just take a break and slow down is I'm not mindful about anything because especially I discovered this around like applications or the work that I'm doing. It just feels like mindless work and I'm not having to think about it and feel like I'm contributing to something. If I don't feel like that, I need to slow down and take a break because it's important to be mindful so that your work has some kind of value. And it became apparent to me, especially when I was working on these applications, because you need to have that self-reflection, like that deep self-reflection that I can't when I'm just that tired. That is such an important insight, I think. And I think you put it so well. When I start to be, when the work doesn't feel mindful, when I start to do work and it feels almost robotic, when it's, when it's, when I'm not, when I'm, when the work is being done almost mindlessly, You're just doing what needs to be done rather than mindfully. And I think that that is such an important realization. And that I think is really going to help others who are listening to this. I mean, you've you've just like, you know, hit the nail on the head here for so many people, I think, because so many times we may not have, you know, like 
very obvious physical symptoms of like exhaustion, but we certainly have mental symptoms of exhaustion and, or, or tiredness, and we need to restore and we need to reflect. And I think that one of the really, really important points that you made, like I said, was the fact that the work becomes mindless rather than mindful. And I think, I think I can certainly resonate with that. Other others, you know, here are nodding. They can resonate with that. And so that is, I think a really important insight. So thanks Farwa. Yeah. Olivia, how about you? Listening to my body is still something that I'm kind of getting the hang of. I have parents that have always been very hard on me academically. And I, I would study from the moment that I woke up until I went to bed. And I always had friends and family telling me that I worked so hard and that I really lived for that external validation. But I kind of came to realize that I was less productive than I could have been if I had taken the time that I needed to relax. Because when I'm burnt out, I just, I become less productive. I'm having trouble focusing. I can't really complete my tasks. Like Jaylene said, things that should take me maybe an hour, maybe taking me a couple of days. And I tend to make a lot more mistakes. And a really big thing for me is that I find that I tend to become just very apathetic towards life in general. And things that used to bring me a lot of joy don't necessarily bring me joy anymore. When I want to go to the gym, I'm not enjoying my workout, you know? So I find that when I start to feel that way, the best thing for me is just take a full day and relax and do the things that I like to do. Don't think about studying. Don't think about work. Just live for myself for a day. And that really, that really brings me right back. Yeah. And, and I, and I think it's interesting. You said live for yourself for a day. And, and the thing that, that I think one of the important things here is that by taking that step back, you're allowing yourself and you're giving yourself more opportunity when you are working. And by doing that, you are giving yourself your entire future and every opportunity that you possibly could. So I think that that's, I think that's also a really, really great insight. Everyone here is so insightful, but that's not a surprise to me because we're all part of this community. (laughs) And so I'm just so proud of all of the realizations and all the feeling that, that our community does together. And, you know, somebody once asked me, okay, well, how is your, how are your sessions different from therapy? Right. And they're massively different because well, Michelle, I saw, I saw your face and I want you to tell us how our sessions are different than therapy. <laughs> so I think my answer needs a little bit of context. So around the time that I joined the Mastering Academic Applications community, or rather than yeah, when I started the program, it had been a few months after like a significant like life event that like caught where I was like working through a huge amount of grief and had kind of like shocked me and my family and sort of like my family network. And it made me need to re-examine my life. At that time, I wasn't in therapy. And then it was, it, the circumstances made it very apparent that I needed to get back into therapy. So by around the time that I joined this community, I had been in therapy for about a few months and I needed to start considering applications. I needed to make a lot of change in a relatively short amount of time because I had kind of like stuck my head in the sand, was ignoring everything. So I was in this program coming to these coaching calls at the same time that I was doing like weekly therapy. Some days I'd be coming to these coaching calls and then like an hour or two later, I'd be crying your therapy. Yeah. And I call those my double therapy days. I, I think there are like the similarities and the differences. Like in these calls, we talk about issues. We talk about like any issues we're having with the applications, but also how it impacts our lives on like a broader sort of broader stage. Like, when I started choosing my programs, I had to consider what my family would think about them because several of them included international exchanges. And I had to do the work here with this community in realizing that my family's opinions on these programs were not as important as 
what I wanted or what my what I wanted out of my life, where I wanted to be in five years, 10 years, wherever. And I guess some people would say that's a lot like therapy, but it's it's personal development, whatever venue it is, whatever I'm talking about, it's all personal development. It just looks a little different how I got there. So yes, I was doing therapy for specific reasons, working on specific issues. But the way the therapy happens is wildly different to how we kind of do it here, where it's I'm not having it, I'm not having anyone being like, well, how do you feel about this? It's more like you calling me out on things that I'm doubting myself. It's people (laughs) asking me, are am I okay? If I'm like feeling okay, if I had any updates on something I said last week, it's people holding me accountable in a much more, it's more camaraderie. It's these, the, the people in this community are my friends. They're people I like send random things on Instagram. Mm, Yeah. So it's, I can see why people would say why this is just like a different form of therapy, but it's more, it's more about the community. It's more about having people hold you accountable, help you reach your goals, which not to say therapy doesn't do, but it's, it's, there are similarities, but it's, these are, it's like two different things. Yeah. Thanks, Michelle. And so you, you hit on so many important things. And firstly, I think that you hit on this too, that you know, when you're around people who want the same things as you do, i.e. a life beyond your wildest dreams, you get there, you get further and you get faster, you get there further and faster. And when you are part of this community, it's, we absolutely hold each other accountable and it's accountability in the best way possible because you're bringing something that's not working for you. And we're very honest here. We're very honest here. And to the point when, you know, to the point where, you know, when we have a new member join, they actually sometimes email me and they say, Oh my God, people are so honest here. I say, I know join, join in, (laughs) let's go. That's the only way you're going to get there is by being honest with yourself and by checking yourself at the door, by checking your ego and by checking internal versus external expectation and internal versus external validation. And these are all things that we work on here. And so I think the other difference that you hit on was that, you know, rather than our dwelling on like, how do you feel about that? How do you feel about that? It's like, okay, here's the problem. Here's what you need to do. Here's the solution. Here's a timeline. Come back next week. Tell me if it worked. And it's collaborative. I'm not just telling you what to do. It's, well, do you think this would work in this situation? Do you think this would work? Well, what would this person say? What would that person say? What are the dynamics here? Because it's very much about, you know, it's about the applications, but like I say, it's also, it's about your life, right? Your applications are a step toward this life beyond your wildest dreams that you're creating. And it takes time and it takes thought and it takes consideration. And so what we work through here is everything that could possibly stand in your way in terms of mental energy, in terms of how you're spending your time and your energy, bring it here, ask your questions and move on. Don't think about this for more time than you need to bring it to our calls and move on. And so how has that actually been for, for each of you being able to bring what you need to troubleshoot in order to move forward. And there's a skill that that we develop here too, which is being able to identify that thing that's holding you back, right? That thing, even if it's not holding you back, you know, in general, if it's holding you back by like a day or a week, time matters, right? And so what has that been like for you to be able to identify, this is the thing I need to talk about today and here, and I'm going to bring it up and walk away with a solution. What's that been like? Does somebody want to volunteer to, to share first? Michelle? I think it's really reassuring to have like a place where like, if I have a problem, I'm not like panicking, like how am I going to solve it? I'm like, okay, today's this day. It's X number of days until like Tuesday or Wednesday. And then I can bring it up and ask people for help. So it's pretty reassuring to know that I have a place where I can talk it out and it's not just like me ranting and somebody listening and somebody engage it's be, it's multiple people engaging with me and asking me questions sort of teasing out the whole problem and sometimes even when i'm like thinking about the problem 
I don't even need to like put it away and be like, okay, this is a Wednesday problem or this is a Tuesday problem. I can think like, okay, if I bring it up, like, what is Dr. Schneer going to tell me? What is like Casey going to say? What is Stephanie going to say? It's, I feel like we've done so many of these coaching sessions that I can almost be like, this is what they've said in the past. This is what they would probably say to me. And sometimes I can work it out and I'll just like bring the update. But it's it's an overall reassuring feeling to know that they're like people who are not just showing up so they can talk and pretend to listen to me. It's like mm. we all genuinely care about each other's success and getting each other to the next point. Mm. Oh my God, I love that. You're And you're obviously so right, but like, thank you for putting it so eloquently. And it's absolutely true. Does anyone want to add on to, to with your experience to what Michelle said? I could go. Okay, sure. Casey, go ahead. Yeah. So I can definitely relate to a lot of what Michelle mentioned and just the ceiling of community and camaraderie has really helped me personally and just dwelling less in general, because there was one particular situation that I was in and we've talked expen- extensively about it in the group coaching calls. It happened like last year in September. And instead of me feeling really unsure of my next steps or what actions I should take to mitigate and solve the situation, instead of feeling alone in the situation, I was able to bring my concerns and questions to the coaching calls. And everyone here was just so supportive. Dr. Schneer, Stephanie, Michelle, just everyone here at the time who was here was so supportive and really helped work, really helped me to work through that situation so that I could come out of it in one piece and with a lot of clarity on, on what I should do and what I could do at the time. And just being able to have this space and this time every week is, has been so valuable to me and so, so important in my own personal growth. And honestly, my favorite time of the week. It's Mine so too. nice to see everybody each week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I say that at the beginning of so many calls, when I see all your faces starting to pop up, I'm just like, I say it, I think almost every week, like, Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so, like, this is my favorite place to be. <laughs> and, and I'm so happy that you share that sentiment. And, you know, I should say that one of the reasons that we've continued on zoom is because we have clients across the country. We have people joining us from Vancouver, from Nova Scotia. Jaylene is joining us from Nova Scotia, from Toronto, from everywhere across the country. And so we, meet on Zoom. We do have in-person events, but we meet every week. All of our sessions are on Zoom. And Michelle mentioned the Tuesday or Wednesday. She's also giving a nod to the Success Society. All of the members here today are also in the Success Society and there are others there as well. And the Success Society is our higher level coaching community where we focus on everything in addition to the application. So life. And so Everybody here today also comes on Tuesdays from 12 to 1 Eastern time. And we work together through your advancement every single step of the way. Does anybody want to add? I would love to add. Yeah, go ahead. Um, Casey and Michelle really, really highlighted what it's like to share. I want to highlight what it's like to listen. From being here since like October and also being on the Success Society, I go really quiet some days because I'm just listening, soaking everything up like a sponge and I'm just like eating it and loving it because it makes me feel like I'm not alone. Like I've experienced everything that everyone's sharing at some point and everyone always apologizes. They're like, oh, I'm so sorry for taking everyone's time. And you're always like, you're not, never apologize. And I'm there sitting there like shaking my head. Like, why are you apologizing? Because it's so nice when someone shares their experience, their perspective, and you're like, wow, just like a month ago or just like a week ago, I was experiencing the same thing. And so was someone else. And I'm just loving it and soaking it up and just everything that everyone says, I can relate to. And it's so nice to not feel alone because when we're not here on these weekly conversations, we're alone. We're in a room. We're working. We're working on all these things that are coming up and we feel so isolated. We feel so alone because I live in Nova Scotia. I and all my friends live without a province. And then we come on these weekly calls 
and everyone sharing everything, their personal life and they're being called out. And you're like, wow, I needed this today. I needed this yesterday, but it's so good to finally hear it and to have people who relate to me and have experiences similar to mine and even gain new perspective on an experience that might eventually come come across because we all come across these experiences. We all come across these barriers. We all come across these obstacles. And it's just so refreshing. It's just so nice to have new perspective and to listen and to also like support by just like being silent because you're gaining so much and you're learning so much. And I'm just so thankful for everyone and so thankful for everyone's experiences everything everyone brings to our weekly sessions like on Tuesday and Wednesday I'm just so excited and again like what Casey said it's her favorite time of the week it's also my favorite time of the week like I made sure to tell my boss I cannot work Tuesday and Wednesday from one to two because that is my time of the week to listen and they listen like I'm not scheduled any Tuesday and Wednesday because I want to be here. I want to make time in my schedule to listen, to support, to just know that I'm not alone. Yeah, that's so amazing. And one to two Nova Scotia time. And so so we're it's 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 magical like what is happening here. The transformation, the shifts that are happening in how we see ourselves and how we view ourselves and how we relate to each other is just like, it's, it's magic what happens here. And I'm so grateful for each and every one of you. And Farwa, I saw your hand. So go, go right ahead. I just wanted to add on to a point that Jamie mentioned, which is we're in a space that is, that if us as people who participate in the space, we're not afraid to call each other out. And that is personally one of my favorite things about this conversations, because sometimes I get too into my head. The entire week, I'm procrastinating on something and I just can't, you know, get out of my head. I'm overthinking. And when I come in, it just gets so simplified. And one of the favorite things that you last year mentioned, Dr. Schneer, is we're here to make ourselves accountable to not any other person, but to ourselves. So it's not, you know, Michelle or Adrienne or anyone calling me out and just be like, okay, you promise you're going to do this. When are you going to do this? It's a promise that I made to myself. Yes. Um, one of the most important things that I've taken away from the space. So, And such an important skill, right? It's such an important skill. And to be able to develop that with supportive people here is it just makes it easier and joyful and not miserable during a really, you know, isolating time in our lives when everyone around us is figuring out what they are doing, we're figuring out what we're doing. And there's the aspect that there, there's the, the, you know, the competition mindset that people have, the scarcity mindset that people have. And here we just wash that all away. And so you're really able to change the way you interact with yourself and change the way you perceive and interact with others because you're coming from a place of, of authenticity from feeling yourself. And that is one of the most important things that we could do for ourselves. And so as we wrap up our conversation today, I want to get back to the our initial conversation, which was how to listen to ourselves and what we need to do in order to relax and restore. And I love the tangent that we've taken. And, and so I want to also wrap that conversation up by asking you, what does it look like for you to restore? What does it look like? What are you doing during the break, during, let's say you're taking a day for yourself, or maybe, you know, after a really busy semester, you're taking a week for yourself. What are you doing during that time? Because I know that our members in this community are not vegging out for seven straight days. I know that that's not happening. (laughs) And I know that we're not relying on any unhealthy vices or substances. And so I want to give everyone an idea of what we are implementing, what is working. And what, you know, it's not that anything is implemented in a split second. It takes time and effort, right? So can you speak number one to what it is that that you've grown to do in order to restore, rejuvenate, relax, get back to yourself? And number two, how much work it's taken. And I know for a fact, it's something we're all still working on. I'm still working on it, 
right? And so if you could give me those sort of two, your perspectives on those two things, that would be awesome. So does anyone want to go first? Olivia? Yeah. So when I feel like I need a break and I take a day for myself, I find that one of the things that kind of helps me reset and get back on track is organizing myself and what I need to do. I like to write out my calendar, my planner, whatever it is. I find that seeing all of the tasks that I have to complete make them feel like a lot less of a mental load for me. And then, like I said, it's just getting back into doing what I like to do and actually enjoying it again. So I might take the day to go work out and really enjoy my workout and take my time and spend time with my family, you know, play with my cat, go see my friends, because I find when I'm really stressed out, I do tend to become very socially withdrawn. And so it's just taking the time for me to go do what I like to do. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Who wants to share next? Jaylee? For me, it's like Olivia said, doing things that she loves to do. For me, I do the same thing and also surround myself with people who do not drain my battery or make it longer to recover. Instead, they help kind of in a way, charge my battery because they're so kind, so supportive. And it actually helps when you're surrounding yourself with people who support you and and really care about you and also are the friends who are hard on yourself. So who call you out when you need to be called out. So like this community and also doing nothing is like you said, doing something. So whether that's I just sit on the couch all day or I sit outside all day or I lay in my bed, that's recharging my battery and that's doing something. Yeah. And it's allowing you to think, right? Like just like decompress and clear your mind, Uh right? You don't need, we know that we don't need substances. We don't need to like escape reality and not feel in order to be able to clear our minds. We know that we can clear our minds in a much more productive way. And sometimes it takes silence. Yes, it does. Sometimes it takes a day and sometimes it takes two days and sometimes it takes a week. We just sometimes need to clear our minds. We need to give ourselves the opportunity to think again, get out of the detail oriented work and really be able to take a step back from the magnifying glass and look at everything. So yeah, I appreciate that, Jamie. Thanks. I, yeah. I also want to highlight that everybody deserves a break and you deserve to listen to your body. And for me, I'm still working on it. And I've been working on it since my second year of my undergrad. But graduating and writing my LSAT, working on everything, I am still working on listening to your body. And you do deserve a break and you do deserve to relax and you do deserve to listen to your body no matter what's going on in your life. Yeah. Thank you, Jaylene. So true. And we're all still working on it. I think we're always all, I think we're, you're, we're always working on it, right? That's never going to stop. And that's another realization I think that a lot of people don't come to is that this is a skill that you never stop developing. It's not like, you know, you've had 90 hours of it and now you're or 90 days of it, 600 hours of something, you know, and, and now you're a pro at it. Like you might get better at it over time. Sure. But we're always, the mindful aspect is something that we always have to practice. Steph. I just wanted to add to what Jaylene said, to sit on the couch and not feel guilty about it. Yeah. I think not feeling guilty is just a huge thing because like, like I had mentioned before, like before this community, I would sit on the couch and procrastinate and then the anxiety would just build because like the, <laughs> it's just like, it's like forefront in your brain and you're not actually relaxing. So to be able to sit on the couch and just be okay with that is a huge thing. And I think that's, it is. Thank you so much for sharing that. Does anyone else want to, want to give your thoughts and and give your sort of final thoughts on that? Casey? Yeah. So me, rejuvenation and restoration looks like doing something totally different from what I'm supposed to be doing. That also looks like 
spending time with the people that I want to spend time with and who help me to recharge. So yeah, when I feel like I need that break, like Steph says, that guilt-free break and just stepping away from the task at hand, that looks like me going out with my friends. Because like Olivia, I, I do tend to withdraw a little bit from social interaction when I'm feeling stressed out or busy. So really finding that time to spend time with friends and to just go out into the city and and walk around and see the sights. And also I recently got my driver's license. So rejuvenating also, well, not recently, I want to say like last year, <laughs> but yeah, recently rejuvenation looks like going for a drive with my sisters and just getting bubble tea down the road. So the points that I want to make is that it's so important to step away from the task when you're feeling like you're overwhelmed so that you are not dwelling on why you're not getting the task done. So just taking yourself out of that stressful environment for, for a little while and doing something completely different with people who you enjoy spending time with is just so, so important. And I cannot stress that enough. You have to spend time doing the things that you want to do and spend time with the people that you care about and who care about you. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. I think that people aspect of things is actually an entirely different podcast episode that I would love to come back together on and record because I think that we've talked about this so much, you know, including people in your life who help to fill you up and build you up rather than make you feel exhausted and drained. So that's a, that's another topic for another day. And I would love to do this again with all of you, because this is something that also takes a lot of practice and skill to be able to work out who, who is in my life, who am I allowing into my life and why? Right. And so that's an entirely different discussion that I want to have. So thanks, Casey, Michelle, did you want to add here? I definitely agree with what Casey says, what Casey said and what everyone else has said about surrounding yourself with people that make you feel good about yourself that that they're not like taking away from you but i think it's also important to surround yourself not just with people but with things that don't stress you out so if that means like making sure that you're that where you're studying or where you're working is like in a way that's conducive to you being productive it's or like if your room is a mess and you need to clean it but because the the mess is stressing you out you have to put in that work, to, that pre-productivity work to like get okay. yourself in the right mindset to do what you need to do, but also to be able to take care of yourself, advocate at effectively. Effectively. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Thank you, Michelle. Okay. Well, thank you all so much for being here and for sharing your experiences and for talking about something that I think we need to talk about and, and shine more light on because I think so many people on their journeys are sitting on the couch and feeling guilty and procrastinating and feeling anxious and not knowing what kind of break to take. And I think the moral of the story here is do something that helps you to feel rejuvenated and restored, not depleted. Don't do something that you then have to recover from. Don't see people that you have to recover from, right? Right. And that may mean you go by yourself for a walk. You make time for a walk every day for yourself, or you take a day off, or you take a week off when you can, and you do something, you explore, you have an adventure, you give yourself a different experience to be able to have that space from the detail-oriented work that we're doing. And from the, the, you know, it is stressful as much fun as we're having here. It is stressful. Right. And so, and so we're honest about that too. And in being honest about that, we can find solutions that are that work for all of us, right? On different days, different things will work. Not every strategy is going to work every day. And that's also important that not this, the, the same type of break won't work all the time. It depends what we're doing, how we're feeling, and on so many other things. So I want to thank you all for joining me here today. And For those of you who are listening, thank you so much for taking time out of your day and we will see you next week. 
Thanks for listening to the Advancement Spot podcast. If you heard something today that helped you get one step closer to achieving the amazing life you want, and you'd like to learn more about working with me, I'd love to hop on a call with you to see how we can help you. So follow me on Instagram at applyyourselfglobal and send me an email at hello at applyyourselfglobal.com. I'd love to hear from you. Remember to subscribe so you never miss an episode, leave this episode a review, and share this episode with somebody you think needs a boost of inspiration and actionable tools to help them succeed. Thanks for joining me and see you next week.